friends, it's Grace, and today I will be doing the Thanksgiving Writers Tag. This tag was created by Faith Lane Author, and she tagged me in her video. I will link her original video down below. It's all about writers, so this is super exciting. So all of these questions have to do with some sort of Thanksgiving-related food item. I'm going to skip the food stuff because I'm a picky eater, and I don't like any of the food. So I'm just going to go right to the questions, but the uh, food part will be in the description down below. So the first question is, are you an underwriter or an overwriter? Most definitely an underwriter. My first drafts are fairly short and I tend to have to add scenes or add more bulk to scenes. I get comments in my earlier drafts of, I like the scene but it went by too fast, like it happened too suddenly, like I need to see more of this and so I'm definitely an underwriter. The next question is, are you a morning or evening writer? Definitely morning writer because I don't, I'm not awake in the mornings. <laughs> I do everything in the evening because I don't do anything in the mornings, which includes writing. I only write in the evening, only, only, and at night. The evening and night, are they different? The third question is, what chapter felt like a breakthrough idea that came to you? This is a hard question for me because I plot. I do really extensive outlines. So um, there's not like a breakthrough that comes through through the writing process. So I'm just gonna go with the outline process for this. Let me situate Wendy while I think about this. She's so cute. Belly, what are you barking at? What's happening? Oh, there's a dog outside? How dare they? She's watching the dog outside. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> Billy! <laughs> you got a cute little hop when you bark, little girl. Yeah, there's, there's a dog outside. Scare him away. You got it. Oh, good job, Belly. What a good guard dog. Oh, that was such a cute little poop. <laughs> yeah? Did you scare the doggy away? Did you do that? Did you guard our family? Good job, Belly. So I really, I don't know how to answer this question. I kind of feel like maybe some of the scenes with Rose and her dad, I'm talking about my work in progress through this entire thing, which I'm currently very near the end, like very near starting to query agents. That'll be in like January or February. I'm with my last group of beta readers and they're basically all saying they have nothing to change. And I've gotten a lot of five star reviews and I'm like, what? And so a part of me is like, oh, I just got bad beta readers because they're not telling me the truth. <laughs> but then the other part of me is like, actually in real life, you're probably just improving your book. That's, I mean, that's the goal, right? Why don't, <laughs> and I have hired an editor to read it in December and I'm super excited. It's Elizabeth Sims. I recommended her book, You've Got a Book in You, in my writing book video, which I will link down below if you want any writing book suggestions. I have some great suggestions. But anyway, she wrote You've Got a Book in You and so I've admired her writing for a long time and she's gonna edit my book in December and I'm super excited. I know you don't have to hire an editor when you're gonna traditionally publish because they will like edit stuff for you but I want to be an overachiever and uh, get, make sure that my book is the best it can be before I even start sending it to agents because I'm really worried about ruining my first shot my one shot so I think I would just say that um, some of the scenes with Rose and her dad in this book a million falling stars felt like breakthrough in the sense that they they came really easily but they also like brought a lot of characterization to Rose and a lot of meaning to the story. Writing those and plotting those felt really good. Like I felt like those absolutely belonged in the story and it felt like as I was plotting those, I was like, yes, the story is coming together. Question number four is how many times have you written chapter one of your book? This is another hard question. I would say once because I've only written the chapter once. I don't do entire rewrites because I plan so thoroughly ahead of time that I don't have to do entire rewrites. I just revise what I have. So the first chapter's definitely changed, but I've only written it once. Like the core idea of it has been written once and just changed a lot throughout my little process. Question five is what genre are you writing? I'm writing young adult contemporary. Question number six, do you write titles for your chapters or prefer just numbering them? I only number them for this book. I, in some of my earlier books, I named the chapters, but sometimes it can be gimmicky and for this book, it just didn't fit it. 
Um, there might be books in the future where I feel like I want to name the chapters, but like that's just not always the case and it wasn't for this one. So for this one, chapters are just numbered. Question seven is, how long have you been working slash writing on your book? So I started writing it for NaNoWriMo of 2018 and finished it on November 16th. And so yes, it took 16 days to write and I think I, there were like three days, three of those days that I didn't write anything. Um, and so I'm impressed with myself. <laughs> I'm definitely a quick writer, first drafter, because um, of how much plotting I do, but the plotting is what takes the bulk of the time. And so let's see, I'm gonna figure out when I got the idea for A Million Falling Stars because that'll show you like how long this has been in the works, which is a very different question than how long since I like wrote the first draft. Okay, so I got, oh my gosh, I got the idea for the book on December 26th of guess what year? 2013. That was a very small seed of the idea, which basically is not what the book is now, but it was just a question. It was like, what if this and this? That's basically not what it is now, but that was the first seed of the idea. The first time I started working on some ideas um, was December of 2015. So two years later is when I first picked up this idea and was like, let's do something with it. And then there was a big break until um, fall of... 2016 where I did a good amount of stuff there. I did a lot of plotting in 2016. Not plotting but like writing ideas in my little note. In my list of title ideas, okay, title ideas on January 2nd 2017 um, A Million Falling Stars was in that list. So it was titled on January 2nd 2017. That's really cool. <laughs> this is cool looking back I'm getting really nostalgic. So through February, March of 2017, I was really digging deep and like getting ideas and through all of 17 um, and then through obviously the rest of 2018. I didn't start like legit plotting it actively like every day until probably the summer of 2018 in anticipation for NaNoWriMo. But that's how long the process is and that's how it is for all my books. I have so many book ideas and so once I come to them, it's years after the book idea, but then I write it all like at once. So I wrote the book a little over a year ago. I have been revising it since like February or March or April of 2019. Um, and now I am near the end of revisions. Belly is barking at nothing. Question number eight is which perspective is easier for you, male or female? Female because I'm female. I don't think I've really written from male's point of view, except for like maybe short stories, maybe, I don't even know. Question number nine, salty or sweet protagonist or side best friend? Mix of both, depends on the book. Um, in this one, Rose is kind of neither. More salty, I mean, she's pessimistic. Her best friend Eden is more sweet. I don't know. <laughs> Question 10, simple or complex characters and plot? Complex? I, I obviously want my characters to be complex because otherwise, the book because nobody's gonna like it <laughs> why would you read about very simple characters like that doesn't make sense but my plots are fairly simple because they're YA contemporary and I definitely focus on the characters and the character development so I would say complex characters simple plot not too simple like they don't just sit at home with their pugs and just do nothing actually that sounds like a good book to me Wendy does not agree question 11 is how do you deal with writer's block I keep going. That's the one of the biggest lessons I've had to learn is when you have writer's block, you gotta do it anyway. You can't let writer's block be an excuse to not work. There are a lot of times when I feel like I have no ideas. That's when I go to writing books. That's when I go to um, websites, when I look up questions online that will help me with my writing process. That's when I go to my friends on bookstagram and I'm like hey help me brainstorm this like writer's block happens but it's just an obstacle that you have to be prepared for and have to get over in the sense that you have to overcome it every time you cannot let writer's block be an excuse to not write you have to still write or else you're never going to get anything done question 12 is when and where do you get your best ideas so this is a hard question. Sometimes while I'm reading a book, it may not have anything to do with the book I'm reading, but just the process of reading a book and enjoying it, even maybe not even 
been enjoying it, but the process of reading a published book makes my, you know, writer's juices just come up and be like, hey, here's an idea. And so I just write it down. So I have a huge list in my phone of book ideas, like so, so many, so many that I won't get to them all. And obviously some that are from like 2011, I'm not going to get to because they're stupid. <laughs> but then like some of the more recent ones, I definitely want to write it, even if it's not anytime soon. These will be books that will, they're in the queue to be written eventually. <laughs> Question 13 is give a scoop on a scene that is in your book that took you by surprise. Again, a scene that took me by surprise. That's a uh, questionable because I thought um, I think I I was surprised by how much I enjoyed um, writing the first kissing scene that happens between Adam and Rose not a spoiler because it's a YA contemporary of course they're gonna make out eventually and that scene was really fun to write but it also like I felt like a lot like it it was it came out very easily and like I was so excited about it that like as I was writing it I was like screenshotting little parts uh, to like tease my book club and I was sending it to them just to tease them and to be like ha 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 you can't read this yet it was fun but it also like felt really good like it felt like like I, those that scene I haven't changed much from first draft to almost final number 14 is are you writing a standalone duology trilogy or series a million falling stars is a standalone but i do have some ideas most of my contemporary books will be standalones but i have currently i'm vaguely working on an idea for a fantasy trilogy i believe but for contemporaries they're pretty much all standalones and the final question question 15 is name five things that are in your book so we've got a road trip Juvenile Huntington's disease, a pug, because I've decided my author thing is that there's going to be a pug cameo in every single book. So um, her best friend has a pug, a drive-in movie theater, and a bucket list. So thank you so much for watching this. This was a fun tag. If any of you guys want to do it, I tag you. I tag. If you're watching this, I tag you. Thank you for watching. Come back on Tuesday for my next video. Belly and Wendy will be here as always. They're obviously very tired today. Mwah. Thank you for watching and I will see you next time.